Hi, in this video, we're going to talk about how map kinase signaling pathway and its components were discovered. Now, whenever we talk about the map kinase pathway, we very often say the first step is phosphorylation of the receptor tyrosine kinase upon ligand binding, followed by binding to an adapter GRB2, and then a GIF molecule, a guanosine nucleotide exchange factor molecule, SOS, binds to that. Now, SOS activates a GTPase, small monomeric GT, G, G protein known as RAS. Now, upon activation of RAS, RAS allows activation of several kinases such as MAP triple Ks. Now, one such example is RAF. Now, in subsequent state, there is a kinase cascade. And in stepwise fashion, the kinase cascade goes on. And ultimately, the MAP kinase is phosphorylated which ultimately lead to changes in the gene expression. And mostly these MAP kinase pathways are actually in, uh, are more pronounced in case of growth signaling pathway, which leads to growth and cell division. So the genes that are transcribed are mostly important for growth, survival and cell division. So this was a quick overview of MAP kinase pathway. It is very easy to understand from when the schematic is complete. But imagine that time in early 1970s when none of these pathway or the schematic was there. Everything was blurry. How did this pathway was drawn? This pathway which only took two to three minutes for this overview. It took almost 20 years for this pathway to be figured out. And in this video, we are going to talk about how that pathway was discovered, how these molecules of this pathway was discovered. And that particular time, the molecular biology was not so strong. As a result, classical genetic experiments were beautifully designed to discover this pathway. In Drosophila, these components of these pathways were first chalked out. In Drosophila, the eyes, just like any other insects, is compound eye. Now the compound eye has units known as omatidia and each omatidia has a specific arrangement of photoreceptor cells. In case of flies, there are eight photoreceptor neurons, R1 to R8, and R7 is a specific photoreceptor which is important for UV sensitivity of the flies. Now it has been shown that a specific receptor tyrosine kinase molecule known as 7-less and its ligand bride of 7-less is important for photoreceptor development because in the mutation of 7-less where the receptor tyrosine kinase is mutated, the photoreceptor development is abrogated. The R7 photoreceptor neuron is not properly developed and it has its behavioral consequence at, as well. Now, using this assay, scientists wanted to ask that what are the downstream molecules which are affecting this pathway? Because till now, a broad framework is ready that you have a signaling molecule, the ligand and the receptor is known. But the downstream pathway molecules are completely unknown at this stage. But the phenotype is also known, which is ultimately regulating the photoreceptor development. Now, what scientists did is a very clever experiment. They used temperature sensitive mutants. So let me tell you what is temperature sensitive mutant. So in a non-permissive temperature, these signaling components would be mutated and no signaling would take place. So at non-permissive temperature, the simple phenotype is their eye development is perturbed. But in a permissive temperature, the mutation effect won't be visible and the fly would behave just like a normal fly. Now, in an intermediate temperature, there would be just enough amount of protein produced such that the photoreceptor development can take place. A marginal level of signaling activity would be present at an intermediate temperature. This is very interesting and very important because in the intermediate temperature, if you allow several other mutation in combination with the these seven less uh, temperature sensitive mutant and then look for 
in which cases the development doesn't take place that means that with a combinatorial uh, combinatorial mutation the particular pathway is blocked or abrogated and that exactly scientists did so they made bunch of combinations for example with seven less temperature sensitive mutant they combined another mutation a combine another mutation b and so on so forth and each cases they looked at where the eye development of uh, r7 photoreceptor is abrogated and after a long screening process which was elegantly developed they ultimately figure out that the r7 photoreceptor pigment is not properly developed in situations let's say for b and let's say for another molecule l that tells them that these molecules this molecule b or these molecule l might be somehow involved in this pathway because if they are not involved in this pathway mutating them doesn't matter and the pathway should have ultimately lead to photoreceptor development but as they are important for somehow in this pathway their mutation leads to abrogation in r7 development now ultimately these genes that we just uh, exemplified as b or l turns out to be grb2 and sos this is how grb2 and sos are discovered after that using similar kind of approach people found out that which is the order of these signaling molecules that means which signaling molecules come downstream to which signaling molecule let me give you an example so what people did they started over expressing the same signaling molecules in a background of seven less if it rescues that means these signaling molecules are acting downstream to the seven less mutation right so let me give you a overall picture such that it is it's possible for you to understand so let's say we we pretty much talked about the map kinase signaling pathway right where the signaling components that we know now that time it was not known ultimately give rise to specific gene expression such as cyclin d or cmig now the first and foremost criteria is the receptor phosphorylation in the save mutant the receptor is faulty that means the the signaling that should flow via this receptor mediated pathway is going to be actually blocked or this signaling pathway would be perturbed not happening right and as a result the photoreceptor won't be developed but if you forcefully in this mutant background over express grb2 then what would happen regardless the mutation the, the receptor is mutated the signaling would flow right and as a result the flux through the map kinase signaling pathway would lead to development of proper photoreceptors that means the phenotype that happened due to the absence of seven less is now rescued when grb2 is over expressed and this is how they figured out which of the genes are important for this map kinase signaling pathway another gene which was discovered like this was ras it turns out that constitutive active format of ras that means the ras which is unable to hydrolyze its gtp which is always active when you have that kind of mutation in a sevenless background it rescues the phenotype because normally seven less mutation would lead to a defect in the eye development right but over expressing ras or this particular mutation would actually rescue the phenotype suggesting ras is also a component which is acting downstream to this particular seven less receptor and this is how year after year analysis with sophisticated genetic tools and clear cut thought scientist had totally figured out how the map kinase signaling pathway would look like now this is only the geneticist approach throughout the year there are structural biological approach there are biochemical approach which in addition to this genetic study give us a holistic idea about the map kinase signaling pathway 
So this video not only describes the power of genetic tools to study a signaling pathway, but also tell you an interesting story about how the map kinase signaling pathway components were discovered actually, right? So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And do let me know in the comment how you like my videos. Thank you guys.